I would like to uh, reiterate my strong support for Senator Gillibrand's reforms to the military justice system. Uh, I'm an original co-sponsor, proud to be there of this act, and I should add that it has been a pleasure working with Senator Gillibrand on the issue. Her passion and commitment to rooting out sexual assault in the military ought to be inspiring to all of us and watching how she negotiates and how she uh, lobbies for her ideas uh, can teach all of us a good lesson. I should also add that I appreciate the work of the Armed Services Committee, which added a large number of common sense reforms to the underlying bill. In fact, some of them are so common sense that you have to wonder why the military hasn't adopted them already or, if needed be, ask for legislation to do so before now. <clears throat> for instance, the bill before us provides people convicted of certain sexual assault offenses may not join the armed forces, common sense. Requires mandatory discharge from the armed forces of any member convicted of certain sexual assault offenses, common sense. And directs a comprehensive review of the adequacy of training pertaining to sexual assault prevention and response, common sense. The underlying bill also has a number of provisions to address certain concerns about co commanding officers not handling sexual assault charges properly, but still keeps this judicial process in the chain of command. That is inappropriate, hence this amendment. We've tried working within the current system. This isn't a new issue. Military leaders have been making emphatic promises about tackling the problem of sexual assault for years and years, but the problem only seems to be getting worse. What's more, the current system appears to be part of the problem. There's a culture that has to change, and it won't change by itself. According to a recent Defense Department report, 50% of female victims stated they did not report the crime. Why? Because they believed that nothing would be done with their report. 74% of females, 60% of males perceive one or more barriers to reporting sexual assault. 62% of the victims who reported a se sexual assault indicated they received some form of professional, social, or administrative retaliation. This should not happen in a military where everybody ought to be looking out for everybody else. A very close worked unit is essential for everybody's protection, but also for the success of the mission. So it is a terrible deterrent when uh, sexual assaults ought to be reported 100 percent, but aren't. If sexual assault cases are not reported, well, it's quite obvious. Common sense tells you they can't be prosecuted. If sexual assault isn't prosecuted, common sense ought to tell us it leads to predators remaining in the military and a perception that that sort of activity will be tolerated, or you can get away with it. And common sense tells us that people get away with it. By allowing this situation to continue, we're putting at risk the men and women who have volunteered to place their lives on the line. We're also seriously dam damaging military morale and military readiness taking prosecutions out of the hands of commanders and giving them to professional prosecutors who are independent of the chain of command will help ensure impartial justice for the men and women in uniform. I know some senators will be nervous about the fact that the military is lobbying against this legislation. There's a certain awe that permeates among senators when people with stars on their shoulders 
appear among us. We're being asked once again that environment's here to wait and see if the latest attempt to reform the current system will do the trick. I would respond that the time for trying tweaks to the current system and waiting for another report or study has long since passed. We also hear that this measure will affect the ability of commanders to retain good order and discipline. I'd like to be clear that, that we in no way take away the ability of commanders to punish troops under their command for their military infractions. Commanders also can and should be held accountable for the climate under their command. But the point here is sexual assault is a law enforcement matter, not a military one. If anyone wants official assurances that we're on the right track, we can take confidence in the fact that an advisory committee appointed by the Secretary of Defense himself supports our reforms. On September 27th this year, the Defense Advisory Committee on uh, Women in the Services, and I believe that acronym is DACOWITS, voted overwhelmingly in support of each of the components of the Military Justice Improvement Amendments. This advisory committee isn't something new. These uh, various advisory committees under different secretaries of defense have been around since 1951 when they were created by then Secretary of Defense George C. Marshall. The committee is composed of civilian and retired military men and women who are appointed by the Secretary of Defense to provide advice and recommendations on matters and policies relating to the recruitment and retention, treatment, employment, and integration, and uh, well-being of highly qualified professional women in the armed forces. Historically, this advisory committee's recommendations have been very instrumental in affecting changes to laws and policies pertaining to military women. The bottom line is this, and again, common sense. This isn't some ad advocacy group or fly-by-night panel. It's a long-standing advisory committee handpicked by the Secretary of Defense, and it supports the substance of our amendment to a T. I know it's easier to support incremental reforms. That's even prudent in some cases. However, when we're talking about something as serious and life-altering as sexual assault, we cannot afford to wait any longer than we already have. Our men and women serving this military deserve bold action to solve this problem, not in a few years or a little bit at a time, but right now. So I would urge my colleagues to be bold and join us in this effort. It's the right thing to do. It seems to me like a lot of debates in this body get complicated. And this one seems to get, be complicated too by some people. But it's really a very simple issue. Doesn't need to be this complicated because it talks about changing the culture. Now, I know there's cultures in every bureaucracy that need to be changed, that affects their operations. But none of them are as damaging as the number one responsibility of the federal government. So a culture in the Defense Department has to be taken seriously. Got to change the culture. When you join the military, and I haven't been in the military, so I don't speak with authority on this, but it seems to me as I understand the military, I have a grandson in the Marines, had sons in the military. But when you join, you join because you feel everybody in that units, you're going to have each other's back. There should be no fear of anyone, anyone in the unit. There should be nothing but respect for each other. You should have confidence in each other. You should have loyalty towards each other. You're all on the same mission. None of them should be considered your enemy. 
None of them should have any particular power over you. And that's what this sexual assault thing is all about. Power over weak individuals. Not weak because of who they are, but weak because of the power of the people above. This is badly needed legislation. I yield the floor.